When you look back in Genesis, two books that you need to understand, if you want to understand Bible prophecy, you need to know Genesis and you need to know Revelation because they're bookends. In Genesis, after the fall, I like to draw pictures, so I'm going to draw a picture. Yeah, you. Um, help me out, Sean. You got there you, go. boss. There you go. Can I draw on this? You can draw okay. right on that. So in Genesis, you have fallen human beings build the Tower of Babel. Do you remember that? It says that they came together and they said, God said scatter. God wanted them to spread out over the face of the earth. But they said, we're going to gather together and we're going to build a name for ourselves. Let's build a city. Let's build a tower that goes up into the heavens. And we're going to make a great name for ourselves. And God comes down. And what does he see? He sees that they are doing the exact opposite he told them to do. And God, in a conversation with himself, says nothing that they attempt to do will be impossible for them. And why would God not want that? Because they're in sin and they're fallen and they're lost. And he knows that they will build a utopia or they will build a counter kingdom and they will resist him. So what does he do? He scatters it. He sends them to the north, south, east, and west, and he changes all of their languages so that they can't communicate. It's taken us, let's call it 4,000 years to undo Babel. Because now with AI, supercomputer, and super, I'm just going to draw a little keyboard here. There's your computer. Give him some eyes. There you go. Um, now with AI, what we have done is we've completely undone the effects of God confusing their languages and cultures at the Tower of Babel. We're the first generation since the Tower of Babel that has seen the undoing of God's confusion of Babel. So we can, tr we can take our phones right now. We can communicate with anybody on the face of the earth. We have actually apps called Babel where you can speak into it and tell it what language to speak out and you can communicate with people. Technology and AI has transformed the world. And when you read the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it says that at the end of the age, when God is judging the Antichrist and his kingdom, his city is called Babylon the Great. And I believe that there is a potential, this is not dogmatic, but I believe that there's the potential that when we read in Revelation 13 about the whole world worshiping the beast, who is like unto the beast, that there is going to be an aspect of AI that's connected to the Antichrist. That the, anti, that the AI will actually be able to uh, take on personality. Listen, if demons can possess animals, why couldn't demons possess computers? And what if either the false prophet or the Antichrist is actually an emanation of a demonic personality that takes on a technological reality? Or what if it's a merger of the two? Because it says that he comes with lying signs and wonders, doing things that people have never seen before. He's almost omnipotent. He, he's almost knowledgeable and all-powerful to where he's persecuting the world. And it's almost as if the technology that God was trying to keep humanity from stepping into at the end of the age, escalates, and this is what God has to deal with. So I, you can't be dogmatic about that, but I think it may have a part to play in it. The image of that computer is going to haunt my dreams, I think. So um, You don't like my drawing? It's just terrifying. That's so, no. <laughs> Yeah, it is wild to see the tech. I mean, every, it's not every week or even every day. It's every hour, the rapid increase of technology. And well, think about this. So right now, they've just taken some AI from private to public. And so now it's a race. Multiple nations are racing on the AI front. At least one of the companies, and I believe it was Google. I think it was Google. I read this a couple months ago. It wasn't in a Christian periodical. It was in a technology article. They literally shut down their experiment because what was happening is different AI engines between different companies learned that they were not the only one, so they began to communicate to each other, different AI models, and they created their own language so that nobody but them could understand it. 
And so these companies shut it off before the thing became self-aware. And literally, I mean, because right now you may not know this, but in one of the things our federal government is working on is, you know, the nuclear football that we talk about the presidents having access to? Well, now because of some of the supersonic missiles that China and Russia have, we wouldn't have a 25-minute window to respond, to punch in the codes and to respond. They are now attaching our nuclear codes and our nuclear protocol to AI so that AI could respond to it without any human even knowing that was happening. So they would get notification that a missile had launched from China and AI would automatically respond without anybody punching in the codes. So, I mean, that, that kind of stuff just 